What's gaming gamers? Today, I've got a build for you using the Titan Chest Exotic Heart of Inmost Light. I'll go over the abilities, aspects, and fragments pertaining to the subclass build, the armor and the mods, and the gameplay loop to use this build effectively. Firstly, I'll quickly explain the Heart of Inmost Light Exotic in case anyone isn't fully aware of what it does. Heart of Inmost Light has the exotic perk Overflowing Light. Using an ability empowers your other two abilities, shortening their cooldowns and increasing the ability's effectiveness. Grenades receive 20% extra damage at one stack of Empowered and 35% extra damage at two stacks of Empowered, as well as 400% and 800% increased recharge rate at each respective Empowered level. Melee abilities receive 10% extra damage at one stack of Empowered and 20% extra damage at two stacks of Empowered and have the same 400% and 800% increased recharge rate at their respective stacks of Empowered. From my research, it doesn't seem as if Barricade Health is actually affected by Heart of Inmost Light, although I can't be sure, so if someone has more information, please let me know in the comments. It's a pretty simple exotic, but the low skill floor is paired with a high skill ceiling that allows you to use this build in content ranging from public events to Grandmaster Strikes and be just as effective in either. To get started with the build, I'll go over the subclass. I'll overview everything to run really quickly in case you want a prescriptive build setup, and after, I'll explain different choices you can make, along with my decision making when choosing specific subclass elements. Use the Thundercrash Super, Thruster Class Ability, whichever jump you prefer, Thunderclap Melee, Storm or Pulse Grenade, the Touch of Thunder Aspect, the Knockout Aspect, Spark of Ions, Spark of Magnitude, Spark of Resistance, and Spark of Shock. Now I'll detail why I use this specific loadout and different choices you can make to alter the build to fit your personal playstyle or to better run the specific content you're planning to run. For the super, Thundercrash is, in my opinion, a better PvE super than Fists of Havoc. We're not using Curious of the Falling Star, so Thundercrash's damage won't be as good as it could be with that exotic, however, it's good for quickly melting a champion who needs to die, or single-phasing bosses in any content up to, and even including Master Difficulty, as long as you're at a sufficient power level. For your class ability, you can really use any of the abilities. I use Thruster because it has the shortest available cooldown and cast time, however, the Rally Barricade's cooldown is only 2 seconds longer and provides weapon buffs as well as a small amount of cover, so it can be the better option for specific encounters. Towering Barricade's cooldown is 12 seconds longer than Thruster, although it does give you significant cover from incoming fire, and in long-range encounters can be the difference between being sniped and not. So again, run whichever you believe will be best for the content you're running. There's no one-size-fits-all option here, it boils down to some personal preference and a healthy understanding of the encounters you'll face and the activity you're kidding for. For your melee ability, Thunderclap is the simplest melee ability to use. Both Ballistic Slam and Seismic Strike require having sprinted for a short period of time, and Ballistic Slam requires you to have jumped on top of having sprinted, which is just another step. I do use Seismic Strike for lower-end activities, as I find it fun, but Thunderclap is better for most activities due to its near-instant charge time to quickly empower your other two abilities, decent damage when fully charged, and its ability to be cast from relative safety, as it has a fair bit of range. Boyer Grenade, the Storm Grenade is the best option. Its tracking capabilities, granted by the Touch of Thunder aspect, recently got nerfed, but that isn't entirely detrimental to the grenade's functionality, especially in PvE. It does a really good amount of damage, and benefits from the Spark of Magnitude fragment, but I'll talk more about that specifically shortly when I cover the fragments in more detail. If you're not a fan of the Storm Grenade, the Pulse Grenade is also really good, as well as benefiting from the Spark of Magnitude fragment in the same way the Storm Grenade does. Both are good choices, however, I believe Storm Grenade to be the more applicable option in most activities. Onto the aspects, firstly, I've chosen Touch of Thunder. Touch of Thunder will enhance specific grenades, those being the Flashbang Grenade, the Pulse Grenade, the Lightning Grenade, and the Storm Grenade. Since you'll be using either the Pulse or the Storm Grenades, I'll cover how each of them get changed specifically. The Pulse Grenade will generate an Ionic Trace when it deals damage on a 1 second cooldown. Ionic Traces are really strong as they give you ability energy similar to an Arc Elemental Well, but are not generated for your teammates like Elemental Wells, instead only you get the Ionic Traces. The Storm Grenade's buff from Touch of Thunder is a Storm Cloud that generates on the Storm Grenade's impact location, which, after the recent nerf, tracks enemies weakly for 5.5 seconds with the Spark of Magnitude Fragment. I believe the Storm Grenade is better for groups of adds and bosses who are mobile, as the Tracking Cloud will do more damage to enemies like that. The Pulse Grenade is better for bosses who are slow or immobile, as well as champions who have been stunned, as you'll get the most out of the Ionic Trace generation the longer the grenade is damaging a target. Touch of Thunder also gives two Fragment slots, which is beneficial to the build as a whole. The second aspect is Knockout. This will give your melee abilities increased range as well as 60% increased damage for its duration upon breaking an enemy's shield. Knockout lasts 6 seconds and can be refreshed at any point during its duration. While Knockout is active, your unpowered melee will also count as powered melee abilities for most, if not all, mods and fragments that require powered melee kills, and will deal arc damage. Knockout also makes you amplified when defeating enemies with melee attacks, as well as instantly starting health regeneration. Finally, Knockout gives 2 fragment slots, which allows for more build crafting options than the Juggernaut aspect, which only gives 1 fragment slot. Now to detail the fragments. Firstly, there's Spark of Ions. Spark of Ions will generate an Ionic Trace upon killing an enemy who is jolted and has a cooldown of 10 seconds between Ionic Trace generations. This one pairs well with Spark of Shock, which I'll talk about shortly, as well as the weapon perk Volt Shot, which I will explain in further detail when I go over weapons later in the video. In case you're not aware, a jolted target is a target who is afflicted with destructive arc energy. Upon receiving additional damage, the jolted target will release Chain Lightning and damage any enemies within 8 meters. 
The second fragment is Spark of Magnitude. This one's really strong as it gives the Pulse Grenade two more pulses up to a total of eight, and it gives the Storm Grenade both an extra volley of initial lightning bolts as well as increasing the duration of the Storm Cloud generated by the Touch of Thunder aspect. It also affects the Lightning Grenade by allowing it to fire another Lightning Bolt, although the Pulse Grenade and Storm Grenades are simply better than the Lightning Grenade currently. The third fragment is Spark of Shock. This will make your grenades jolt targets upon dealing damage, which simply gives your grenades more utility and a higher damage potential, making it easier to deal more damage to targets in late game content. It does come with a minus 10 stat penalty to discipline, but with Heart of Inmost Light's ability recharge rates, this isn't a big deal. The last fragment has options, and there are a couple of them. The one I mentioned earlier, Spark of Resistance, is the one that I use. Spark of Resistance gives you a 25% damage resistance buff that procs when you're within 15 meters of at least two enemies. This damage resistance lasts for five seconds, and the fragment itself gives plus 10 to your strength stat, which helps me as mine is lower than I'd like it to be due to my unoptimized armor. Another option for your last fragment is Spark of Discharge. The description for Spark of Discharge states that it will allow your arc weapons a chance to spawn an Ionic Trace upon kill, but it's a bit more complex than that. Arc Weapon Final Blows will add a percentage to a counter, and once this counter reaches 100%, an Ionic Trace will spawn. Minor enemies will contribute 34% to this counter, major enemies will contribute 67% to this counter, and bosses and mini-bosses will contribute an entire 100% to this counter. This means that if you're using an Arc Weapon to kill minor adds, you will spawn an Ionic Trace every 3 kills. I don't recommend running Spark of Discharge concurrently with the Pulse Grenades, as you won't need that many Ionic Traces, but it can be good to run with the Storm Grenade, as you'll have the opportunity to get passive Ionic Traces every so often by simply using your Arc Weapons. Last option for your last fragment is Spark of Recharge. This one's more for low to mid-end content and doesn't have the best application in endgame content. Spark of Recharge will increase your ability recharge rates by 400%, however, it requires being critically wounded to do so. And in endgame content like Master or Grandmaster activities, being critically wounded is something you generally want to avoid. It also doesn't give any stat boosts, which would make this more worth choosing, so use this one if you're doing things like bounties and low to mid-end content and you need ability kills. Now that the subclass is out of the way, I'll describe the armor build and some options surrounding the mod choices. Firstly, I'll go over stat distribution. You want tier 10 resilience, as it's the strongest stat in the game right now, with a staggering 40% damage reduction at tier 10. Resilience is also the Titan's class stat, making it even stronger for Titans specifically, as it means your barricades will charge faster. For secondary and tertiary stats, I choose to spec into discipline and strength, as the shorter the cooldowns are for my grenade and melee abilities, the more I can spam them using Heart of Inmost Light. I prioritize discipline over strength, but it's your decision to make. For your armor piece's affinities, you'll want a Solar Helmet, Void Arms, any Affinity Chest Piece, Arc or Solar Legs, and a Solar Class Item. I'll quickly go over the Prescriptive Mods if you're one who prefers that, and after I'm done, I'll explain why I've chosen specific mods, specific percentages where applicable, and any other options that may be available. On your Solar Helmet, run two Ashes to Assets mods and an Elemental Light mod. On your Void Arms, run a Bolstering Detonation mod, a Focusing Strike mod, and an Elemental Armaments mod. On your chest piece, run whichever resistance mods you prefer and an elemental ordinance mod. On your legs, run two absolution mods and an elemental ordinance mod. Lastly, on your solar class item, run two bomber mods and one bountiful wells mod. For your solar helmet, in the combat style slot, there's an elemental light mod. This will summon an elemental well that matches your subclass type upon defeating an enemy with your super. However, this is mostly just in to fill the last mod slot I needed in the helmet and isn't overly necessary. The reason the helmet is solar is because of the helmet specific mods, which are two ashes to assets mods. These will give you super energy based on how many enemies you kill with your grenades, but the amount it gives you is kind of complicated. The amount of super energy you receive is based on the tier of the enemy you kill. If you kill a tier 1 enemy, which are enemies such as Thrall, Dregs, Warbeasts, and Fanatics, you get 2.3% super energy with one mod equipped and 2.7% with two mods equipped. If you kill a tier 2 enemy, which are enemies such as Acolytes, Vandals, Legionaries, and Goblins, you get 4% super energy with one mod equipped and 4.7% super energy with two mods equipped. If you kill a tier 3 enemy, which are enemies such as Knights, Captains, Centurions, and Minotaurs, you get 7.7% super energy with one mod equipped and 8.85% super energy with two mods equipped. Any enemy the game considers to be a higher tier than those I've just mentioned will give you 13% super energy with one mod equipped and 15% super energy with two mods equipped. On your Void Arms, in the combat style slot, run an Elemental Armaments mod. This has an escalating chance to summon an Elemental Well upon getting kills on enemies using weapons with an affinity that matches your subclass element. The specifics are a little bit different than that, and I'll explain it really quickly. Weapon kills with an element that corresponds to your subclass element will progress a hidden counter, and once that counter hits 100%, an Elemental Well will spawn. This counter can be progressed by 16.7% when killing any minor enemies, elite and major enemies will progress the counter by 34%, and many bosses and bosses will always summon an Elemental Well. This means you'll summon an Elemental Well every 7 or so kills, and that number of kills can be lowered by killing higher tier enemies. In the armed specific mod slots, run one Bolstering Detonation and one Focusing Strike mod. The Bolstering Detonation mod will give you 25% class energy when dealing damage with a grenade, and it has a 7 second cooldown. With two Bolstering Detonations, you'd get 35% class ability energy, but as there's only one slot, it is 25%. 
Focusing Strike will give you 20% class ability energy when dealing damage with your melee ability, or 30% with two mods slotted. One of each gives you more class ability energy than if you were to run two of one specific mod, and with this build you'll be chaining abilities anyways, so running one of each is recommended. On your chest piece, in the combat style slot, run an Elemental Ordinance mod. This will summon an elemental well that matches your subclass element upon getting a kill with a grenade on a 5 second cooldown. Alternatively, you can run a melee wellmaker here, which summons an elemental well upon getting a kill with your melee ability, but I feel getting grenade kills is more consistent than melee kills, as getting within melee distance can be dangerous in endgame content. In the chest specific slots, you can run whichever resistance mod you prefer, whether that be the Season of the Seraph mod Energy Diffusion Substrate, a Concussive Dampener, or a specific damage type resistance. You could also run reserve mods, but resistance mods are better in most applications. On your legs, in the combat style slot, you've got a couple choices to make. If your legs are arc, you can choose to run either another Elemental Ordinance or a Seeking Wells mod. Elemental Ordinance will make your grenades summon Elemental Wells, as I just mentioned, and Seeking Wells will cause Elemental Wells you create to track to yourself and your teammates as long as they're within 20 meters of the wells. In the leg specific slots, you also have some more choices. You can run two Absolution mods, which increase all of your cooldowns when picking up orbs of power. With two Absolution mods equipped, you'll gain 7.5% grenade energy, 8.5% melee energy, and 10.6% class ability energy on orb pickup. Alternatively, if your legs are arc, you can run one or two Invigoration mods, which will give you 10-15% to melee energy upon orb pickup depending on whether you have one or two Invigoration mods slotted. If your legs are solar, you can run two Innervation mods, which will grant you 12-18% to grenade energy on orb pickup depending on whether you have one or two Innervation mods slotted. Personally, I run two Absolution mods and one Elemental Ordinance, as I don't need the plus 10 stat boost from the first slot in the armor. But, if you do need those stats, all of the alternative mods I've mentioned have a lower energy cost than Absolution and Elemental Ordinance, so you can mix and match them to get the stats if you need them. On your Solar Class item, in your Combat Style slot, run a Bountiful Wells mod. If you're running two Elemental Ordinance mods, like I do, you'll spawn three Elemental Wells when Elemental Ordinance procs. One Elemental Ordinance will spawn two Elemental Wells when procced in combination with Bountiful Wells. In the Class Item Specific slots, run two Bomber mods. These will grant you 20% grenade energy upon using your class ability on a Titan, and as you're chaining abilities back and forth, it's a significant bump in the grenade energy. For weapons, it's actually pretty straightforward. Run an Arc Energy weapon, as that will proc the Elemental Armaments mod on the arms. Other than that, there's nothing specific to run. You could also run an Arc Heavy weapon, but as there's no Font of Might mod equipped, it's not entirely necessary, and it's better for you to match the Elemental Burn on a Grandmaster Strike, or just run whichever Heavy weapon you prefer. As far as Arc Energy weapons I enjoy, if you're looking for something exotic, my favorites include the Trinity Ghoul Bow, the Trespasser Sidearm, and the Cloud Strike Sniper Rifle. The only Arc Exotic weapon currently that synergizes with Arc 3.0 is the Delicate Tomb Fusion Rifle that was part of the Season of Plunder Battle Pass. If you didn't play during Season of Plunder, or otherwise didn't get the Fusion Rifle, it is purchasable from the Monument to Lost Lights for 1 Exotic Cypher, 100,000 Glimmer, 200 Legendary Shards, and 1 Ascendant Shard. If you're looking for an Arc Legendary weapon, some options I enjoy are the Come to Pass Auto Rifle, the Tripwire Canary Bow from the Exoframe Vendor in the Helm, the Horror's Least Pulse Rifle from the Nightfall Weapon Pool, the Tarnished Metal Scout Rifle from the Star Chart Vendor on the Helm, the Long Arm Scout Rifle from the Spire of the Watcher Dungeon, and the Icolos SMG from the Exoframe Vendor in the Helm. Of the weapons I've just mentioned, the Tarnished Metal Scout Rifle and the Icolos SMG are the only ones that can roll Volt Shot, which is the perk that synergizes with Arc 3.0. After getting a kill, reloading will proc Volt Shot, and the target you damage next within 7 seconds will be jolted. This works similarly to Incandescent, but requires having reloaded after getting a kill instead of simply procking on a kill. As a side note, I'm usually using the Icolos SMG, and on it I run Enhanced Threat Detector and Enhanced Volt Shot. Threat Detector synergizes incredibly well with the Spark of Resistance Fragment, as both Threat Detector and Spark of Resistance proc when within 15 meters of multiple enemies. Now that the build is out of the way, I can go over the combat loop. Firstly, upon finding a group of enemies, decide whether you can melee first, or if you have to throw a grenade first. I prefer meleeing first, as that will get your grenade times 2 empowered, but in most content, just a single stack of empowered will be perfectly fine. Once you've thrown your grenade, use your class ability, and all of your abilities will be empowered. Pick up any elemental wells that have dropped and are safe to pick up, try to close the distance between you and your ionic traces to ensure you pick those up, and continue that loop of ability spam. Knowing when and where to throw grenades and use your melee ability is something that takes a little bit of time to learn, especially when doing activities like Grandmaster Strikes, where getting within melee distance is generally a bad idea idea, but it can be done, and that's really how the skill ceiling for this build is raised. Alternatively, you can just go back and forth between your grenade and your class ability, especially because of the bomber mods on your class item. Those will give you 20% grenade energy upon using your class ability, so use it as frequently as you can while also only using it after throwing a grenade, as using your class ability while your grenade is fully charged will waste the bomber mods you have slotted in your class item. If you use your grenade ability first, you would then use your class ability to empower grenade in the melee once, as well as granting you grenade energy, and then by dealing damage through melee ability, you proc the focusing strike mod in your arms, granting you class ability energy. This whole build is designed to feed you ability energy on top of the significantly increased recharge rates, and throughout my time using it, it is incredibly effective in low-end content like farming Dares of Eternity or Vanguard Strikes, and is just as effective in Grandmaster Strikes. I used it all during last week to farm the birthplace of the Vile Strike, and it worked incredibly well. It will do even better this week in the Corrupted Strike, as the Arc Acute Burn modifier increases the amount of Arc damage you deal by 25%.
And that's all for the build. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, criticisms, or alternative setups, please put them in the comments. I appreciate all of your guys' different ideas and use cases for alternative subclass elements or armor mods. I'll be back next week with another Warlock video, so if you'd like to be notified when that goes live, subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful day.